Ladies and gentlemen, what I'm suggesting is that Abraham Lincoln not only had to overcome material privation, he had to overcome emotional poverty, emotional poverty with the losses in his life. And we're just beginning. I mean, if, if we had time, I could really sink us into a depression and talk about all kinds of death. I mean, how about the death after his mother of his sister? His sister died a year and a half after she was married in childbirth. She would have been about uh, 20 years old at that point. 20, 21 years old. Lincoln was two years younger. He was still a teenager. Again, trouble with his father. Who's left? You, lo you lose your, your mom, you lose your sister, you lose a baby brother. Now, of course, it was a godsend when Thomas Lincoln goes out and he finds Lincoln a stepmother. She is a wonderful woman who encouraged his reading said this about him. She had such an interesting comment, and I think it's helpful for those of us to teach, to keep this in mind. said, Abraham seemed slow. He was a slow reader. And he seemed to be a slow learner. But she said she used to watch him struggle with something, and he'd put the book down after he read it, and he would work out whatever it was that he was trying to read. A line from the Bible, a line from Shakespeare, Euclid's geometry, whatever it was. He was teaching himself. This guy's an autodidact. And he would work it out, and she would say, and then she would talk to him. Uh, the stepmother Sarah would talk to Abraham. What, what, what are you reckon over there? What are you reading? And he would explain it. He would put it all back together in his own way. And it'd take him, he'd take his sweet time to figure it out, but then once he had it, he locked it in. Now, what a marvelous way to learn. And he was confident in that manner of learning. And that's how he taught himself. Uh, to go through law, you know, through, through a legal education and everything else was because he was confident in his ability to pick up information on his own time and in his own way. And that's humbling for us as teachers. We need to remember that. But he had this character that he, where he knew it was he was different. He had a character that could overcome the emotional poverty of many deaths. A lot of speculation has has. Uh, been shown over the relationship with the first so-called love of his life, Anne Rutledge. Some historians swear that it's a mythical romance. Others, and I think the tendency now is more to say, no, there was something there because Lincoln had to cope with a liability in his own temperament. He was prone to depression. And you see his first major bout of depression in his 20s when Anne Rutledge dies. So depressed that he throws himself on her grave because he cannot stand the thought of rain and snow falling on her gravesite, on that mound. That depressed. So depressed that his friends, like Joshua Speed, who knew him best as a young man, said, you know, we need to take your knives away from you. So depressed that the speculation is that, that poem that appeared in um, Salem, uh, New Salem, Springfield, about three, four months after Anne died, was a poem about suicide. It was anonymously written, but it has all the marks of Abraham Lincoln's writing. That depressed. He had at least six major episodes of what today would be called clinical depression, where he would take to his bed Abraham Lincoln. Here we imagine this guy, he's ambitious, and we, you know, we, he's smart, and we imagine a guy who's a fully competent adult, but he would literally, he, he went to Joshua Speed's family's house, and he lay in bed. He was so grief-stricken. This is not a guy we can relate to. All of us have had bouts of depression. All of us have had setbacks. All of us have felt like it was our last day. We don't know that about Washington. I deliberately contrasted Lincoln with Washington at the beginning of this talk. We don't know that intimacy of detail about Washington, but we know it about Lincoln. And that's why we identify with him. And that's why you know, we, we, we learn so much more about a leader in our system of government who has to earn trust and has to reveal some of his humanity or her humanity to lead us. So the strong character is really important in Lincoln. Lincoln also, imagine, we think politics is rough and dirty today. You've heard from the other speakers, and surely you know about the vitriol that was uh, conveyed 
about Lincoln's personal appearance. He was called a baboon in the press. In the press, the cartoons. Go to, go to Springfield. There is a place in the museum, the Lincoln Museum there, that shows all of the newspaper <coughs> editorial cartoons about Lincoln. And you will find them scurrilous. You would never see a John McCain. You, you would never see George W. Bush portrayed in such a vicious way as Abraham Lincoln was portrayed. Here's a guy who had a strong ego. He could take it. He had that spark in himself. And he knew that he would be able, if, if he could just position himself, he had the strength of character to overcome that material privation, the emotional poverty, and to be able to do something truly significant in his life because he wanted to. I would say a, a another quality that Lincoln had that you would notice very quickly was his ability to communicate with you. Now it's implied, of course, in the storytelling. But if, if Lincoln had a serious message for you, he could write it and his public letters are very persuasive and powerful, or he could speak it in a group, hundreds of people, and, and convince them that his course was the way to go. Where did this come from? Lincoln had this, this great literary ability. We knew that he, we know that he read the family Bible there in that rude cabin. We know that in his downtime, he was always trying to improve his mind. He would read Shakespeare's plays. He would read Bobby Burns's poetry. He read Aesop's fables. He read Defoe. Um, we know that uh, he was taken with uh, Byron's poetry at a certain point in his life, more the romantic part. Uh, here's a man who go back to Shakespeare. It's been speculated. <laughs> now this is this is a very interesting piece of speculation. I wish I could think of the historian who thought it might might be Burlingame. So I was reading him as I prepared for this talk. Does anybody here know what Shake, what uh, Lincoln's favorite Shakespeare play was? Macbeth. Mm -hmm. What is the? I mean, outside of Lear, say. Uh, what, what, what would you say one of the most tragic Shakespeare plays is? I mean, most people would choose Macbeth. What's Macbeth about? Macbeth is about an ambitious, loveless married couple. That's interesting speculation. Jim, you mm. see exactly where this is going. Mm. <laughs> now, I'm not going to speculate too much on Lincoln's marriage. Um, she was very ambitious for him and was a powerful force for you know, getting him out the door and keeping him on track and advancing him. Um, but she also was a powerful detraction for him in his career because she was very temperamental. And it's been suggested that she had hints of mental illness early on that once she lost three of her four kids, I mean, this would do a number on anybody, I think. Losing a child is terribly difficult. So. Even in the 19th century, if you lose you know, three of your four boys, this would be horrible. So um, my heart goes out to Mary. I, I mean, I, maybe they did have a rough marriage for a number of reasons, but um, they both suffered greatly in having to overcome their losses. I think that ability to communicate though, also comes from not just the, the reading and the lawyering, but also, again, this ability, you know, he had suffered so much, he understood us. And this brings me back to the original point. As an, we come back to this point that he has the ability to connect with people. Now, there are many other qualities that we would notice about Abraham Lincoln were he to come in our midst. We would certainly notice his focus, his ability to, to prioritize what needed to be done and, and stay focused on those things, although he laughed. He, he said that um, he had no system as a lawyer, which is sort of funny. Um, he, he said that he had to find partners always, like Billy Herndon, who, um, and what did he say about Billy Herndon? He said, Billy Herndon was a, a man with system, but a bad lawyer. I was a good lawyer, but I had no system. He said, I later learned that Billy Herndon had no system, but was a good lawyer, so he disappointed me twice. <laughs> Lincoln's humor.